Israel The Promised Land The land that became the battleground between Arabs and Israelis First of which occurred in the year of 1948 The reason why the war occurred was mainly because of the six-month civil war between Jewish and Arab militants at the end of the British Mandate of Palestine and the UN Partition Resolution, stating that Palestine was to be divided into two states, the Jewish state and the Arab state. This garnered severe dissatisfaction and opposition from the Arabs with regards to the population balance at that time. The Arabs argued that it violated the rights of the majority of the people in Palestine, which at the time, 65% of the population are non-Jewish. Only 35% and only are. The Arab-Israeli war was divided into three phases. The first phase started on November 29, 1947, after the UN partition resolution stated that Palestine was to be divided into a Jewish state and an Arab state. This is one of the main reasons why the Arab-Israeli War of 1948 flourished. On December 1-3 of 1947, riots broke out in Jerusalem caused by the Arabs. It was also during these times where Arab blockades began in Jerusalem. From this period to June 1948, it was characterized by numerous skirmishes, road ambushes, riots, bombings, and massacres, whether organized by Arabs or by the Jews. The second phase of Arab-Israeli War, dated July 8 to 18, 1948. This war was known as the Ten Days. The fighting that followed was dominated by large-scale Israeli offensives and a defensive posture from the Arab side. First, Operation Dani was the most important Israeli offensive aimed at securing and enlarging the corridor between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv by capturing the roadside cities Lod and Ramle. The second plan was Operation Dekel, which was aimed at capturing the Lower Galilee including Nazareth. The third plan, to which fewer resources were allocated, was Operation Kedem. It aimed to secure the Old City of Jerusalem but nonetheless, it failed. To the north, Operation Brush was launched in an attempt to dislodge Syrian forces from the Eastern Galilee and to Benot Yaakov Bridge. The operation failed. Finally, we come to the third phase of the war. In this phase, Israel launched a series of military operations in order to drive out the Arab armies and secure the borders of Israel. On October 15, the IDF, or Israel Defense Forces, launched Operation Yoav. Its goal was to drive a wedge between the Egyptian forces along the coast and the Beersheba Hebron Jerusalem Road and ultimately to conquer the whole Negev. The operation was a huge success, shattering the Egyptian army ranks and forcing the Egyptian forces to retreat from the northern Negev, Beersheba and Ashdod. In 1949, Israel signed separate ceasefire agreements with Egypt, Lebanon, Transjordan, and Syria. Israel was able to draw its own borders, occupying 70% of mandatory Palestine, 50% more than the UN partition proposal allotted them. These borders have been known afterwards as the Green Line. The Gaza Strip and West Bank were occupied by Egypt and Transjordan, respectively. Israel lost 6,373 of its people. This was about 
1% of the Jewish population in Israel during that period and was considered a very heavy price for the little state that was just born. Exact number of Arab losses is unknown, but scholars estimate they lost between 5,000 to 15,000 people. About 750,000 Arab Palestinian refugees and more than 600,000 Jewish refugees were created during the conflict. Jewish refugees from Arab lands migrated to Israel, while Arab refugees were prevented from settling in neighboring countries and have remained in refugee camps up to the time of writing. The Vietnam War was a prolonged struggle between nationalist forces attempting to unify the country of Vietnam under a communist government and the United States attempting to prevent the spread of communism. History books tell us that the Vietnam War occurred from 1959 to 1975, but actually, it all started in the year of 1919. It started with Nguyen That Thanh, who went to Paris to speak with a powerful man to negotiate terms of peace on behalf of his people living within the French Empire in Indochina. Indochina refers to the former name of a region in Southeast Asia that is between China and India. Since the Vietnamese had already suffered under French colonial rule for nearly six decades, despite Thanh's pleas in the peace talk, the British, French, and U.S. refused to enforce self-rule for their colonies, and despite Than's direct appeal to President Wilson, the three powers ultimately ignored the young Vietnamese nationalist. Nguyen That Than, disillusioned with the Western democratic process, pursued new and more radical solutions to imperial rule in his country. He was impressed with the success of the 1917 Russian Revolution, so while he was still in France, he decided to join the Communist Party. He adopted a new name, Ho Chi Minh, meaning the Enlightened One. He planned to take his teachings to Vietnam and awaken and unite his own people and lead them to their own revolution. Once Ho was back in Vietnam, he established the Viet Minh, whose goal was to rid Vietnam of the French and Japanese occupiers. Having gained support for their cause in northern Vietnam, the Viet Minh announced the establishment of an independent Vietnam with a new government called the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. The French, however, were not willing to give up their colony so easily and fought back. For years, Ho had tried to court the U.S. to support him against the French, including supplying them with military intelligence about the Japanese during World War II. Despite this aid, the United States was fully dedicated to their Cold War foreign policy of containment, which meant preventing the spread of communism. The fear of spread of communism was heightened by the domino theory, stating that if one country in Southeast Asia fell to communism, then surrounding countries would also soon fall. To help prevent Vietnam from becoming Becoming a communist country, the U.S. decided to help France defeat Ho and his revolutionaries by sending French military aid in 1950. In 1954, after suffering a decisive defeat at Dien Bien Phu, the French decided to pull out of Vietnam. At the Geneva Conference, nations met to determine how the French could peacefully withdraw. The agreement stipulated ceasefire for the peaceful withdrawal of French forces and temporary division of Vietnam along the 17th parallel, which split the country into communist North Vietnam and non-communist South Vietnam. In addition, a general democratic election was to be held in 1956 that would reunite the country under one government. The United States refused to agree to the election, fearing communists might win. With help from the United States, South Vietnam carried out the election only in South Vietnam rather than countrywide. Ngo Dinh Diem was elected. However, his leadership was so horrible that he was killed in 1963 during a coup supported by the United States. Since Diem had alienated many South Vietnamese during his tenure, communist sympathizers in South Vietnam established the National Liberation Front, known as the Viet Cong, in 1960 to use guerrilla warfare against the South Vietnamese. As the fighting between the Viet Cong and the South Vietnamese continued, the U.S. continued to send additional advisors to South Vietnam. When the North Vietnamese fired directly upon two U.S. ships in international waters known as the Gulf of Tonkin Incident, Congress responded with the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. This resolution gave the President the authority to escalate U.S. involvement in Vietnam. 
President Johnson's goal for U.S. involvement in Vietnam was not for the U.S. to win the war, but for the U.S. troops to bolster South Vietnam's defenses until South Vietnam could take over. By entering the Vietnam War without a goal to win, Johnson set the stage for future public and troop disappointment when the U.S. found themselves in a stalemate with the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong. From 1965 to 1969, U.S. was involved in a limited war in Vietnam. President Johnson wanted the fighting to be limited to South Vietnam. By limiting the fighting parameters, U.S. forces would not conduct a serious ground assault into the North to attack the Communists directly, nor there any strong effort to disrupt the Ho Chi Minh Trail. U.S. troops fought a jungle war, mostly against the Viet Cong. The Viet Cong would attack in ambushes and escape through a complex network of underground tunnels. For U.S. forces, finding their enemy proved difficult. Since Viet Cong hid in the dense brush, U.S. forces would drop napalm bombs which cleared an area. In every village, U.S. troops had difficulty determining the enemy since even women and children could build booby traps or help house and feed the Viet Cong. U.S. soldiers commonly became frustrated with the fighting conditions in Vietnam. On January 30, 1968, North Vietnamese surprised both U.S. forces and South Vietnamese by orchestrating a coordinated assault with the Viet Cong to attack about 100 South Vietnamese cities and towns. Although U.S. forces and South Vietnamese army were able to repel the assault known as the Tet Offensive, this attack proved to Americans that the enemy was stronger and better organized than they had believed. It was a turning point in the war because President Johnson faced now with unhappy American public and bad news from his military leaders in Vietnam decided to no longer escalate the war. In 1969, Richard Nixon became the new U.S. president and had his own plan to end U.S. involvement in Vietnam. He outlined Vietnamization, a process to remove U.S. troops from Vietnam while handing back the fighting to the South Vietnamese. To bring a faster end to hostilities, President Nixon also expanded the war into other countries such as Laos and Cambodia, a move that created thousands of protests. To work toward peace, new peace talks began in Paris on January 25, 1969. When U.S. had withdrawn most of its troops from Vietnam, North Vietnamese staged another massive assault called the Easter Offensive on March 13, 1972. North Vietnamese troops crossed over the militarized zone at its 17th parallel and invaded South Vietnam. On January 27, 1973, peace talks in Paris finally succeeded in producing a ceasefire agreement. The last U.S. troops left Vietnam on March 29, 1973, knowing they were leaving a weak South Vietnam who would not be able to withstand another major communist North Vietnam attack. In eight years of warfare, an estimated 2 million Vietnamese died and 12 million were refugees. It had decimated the country's infrastructure and economy and reconstruction proceeded slowly. In 1976, Vietnam was unified as Socialist Republic of Vietnam. In the United States, the effects of the Vietnam War linger long after the last troops returned home in 1973. U.S. spent more than $120 billion on the conflict in Vietnam, and this massive spending led to widespread inflation exacerbated by worldwide oil crisis in 1973 and skyrocketing fuel prices. Also, the war had pierced the myth of American invincibility and had bitterly divided the nation. Many returning veterans faced negative reactions from both opponents of the war and its supporters, along with physical damage including effects of exposure to the harmful chemical herbicide Agent Orange, millions of gallons of which had been dumped by U.S. planes on the dense forests of Vietnam. <laughs>